They were looking for someone to play a chronically self-absorbed actor in his declining years, and they thought of me. <laughs> Which is something that's easier to process on some mornings rather than others. <laughs> Hi, my name is Wahid. We're at the Mayfair Hotel right now in the cinema screening room where we got to see the press conference from the actors, directors and film writers of the film Their Finest. This is the BBC. London suffered further heavy bombing raids last night. Welcome to the Ministry of Information Film Division. Mr Buckley seems to think you're what we need. For doing what? We'll need someone to write the slop. Slop? Women's dialogue. I thought it was a secretarial post. Oh, for God's sake, keep that to yourself. Um, I wondered what brought you two together on this one. Well, I was just going to say that we both, unbeknownst to each other, fell in love with this uh, book, uh, Their Finest Hour and a Half. And uh, Stephen, you, you, usually very good at detecting things, found out that I was the other person competing for the book, and we know each other of old, and he called me up and said, we've got to do this together. Yeah, Amanda and I worked together many years ago on films. Uh, Amanda actually worked with me on Interview the Vampire and the very, on the post-production of The Crying Game, so we've known each other for a very, very long time. Um, and when I found out that Amanda was a bit ironic, she said, this is completely crazy. In fact, we, went, we made Fever Pitch together all those years ago. And it's an incredible, uh, un incredibly detailed process that I often just before didn't realise how difficult it was. But also so thrilling. I mean, the scene, I think my, one of my favourite scenes is when we're kind of um, brainstorming together in, and it's so thrilling. And um, I can imagine it's like that, isn't it, Lona? It's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> you just brainstorm and suddenly there's all these amazing ideas and then a story card. Sometimes <laughs> the best job you can have. And I, I, what I'm hoping is that a lot of Writers will want to become screenwriters after having seen those films because, as actors know, they are the most important. Yeah. The script is the most important part of, of a film, uh, with all respect. But you already knew that. You were yeah. here. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So I think structurally, like to have the, the gift of being able to structure something. Um, like a film, like like a story, like a novel, like a series or whatever. I, I think that's incredibly difficult and I, I think it's a gift for the people that do and are fortunate enough to actually make sense of uh, uh, stories that need to be told, but yeah. Yeah, it was just another example in the film of her tasting blood, finding out how much fun it can be to go to work little by little because she didn't expect that. And his increasing respect for her, Buckley's finding his emotional identity and Catherine's finding her professional identity. And I think that happens all the time in our world today. Um, uh, so and if, if you're asking about relevance or professional relevance or emotional relevance for men and women today, uh, I never felt that this film was uh, primarily a feminist film. I always thought um, the, the uh, film history, the love story, Ambrose's character uh, was what attracted me more and that the, the whole story about a woman finding out what she can do and, and gaining respect for it is uh, definitely the main plot in the story, but the, the whole package, all the details, London, the film industry, the necessity is is what gives the film its depth and its um, complexity. It's much more than a story about a girl who finds out how much fun you can have at work. <laughs> I think, funnily enough, for Catherine, I don't think she's aware of it. I think at that time, I think people just kind of accepted. And we, we hadn't had that second wave, fem we hadn't had the feminist movement yet. And so it was sort of the, we were in the, in the 1940s, you, were kind of, you just kind of got on with it, I imagine, I, I would imagine. Um, and what I like about Catherine is that she is, she is a feminist, and she doesn't know it yet. She just sort of, within that circumstance, sort of ends up being pushed into certain situations where she ends up putting her point down. But, um, and I like that about this film, is that it has a message, but it's not, 
it's very, very underneath, and it doesn't sort of shout about it. It's, it's just there. I think that's stronger than kind of making a big deal out of it. It sort of proves how far we've come. I mean, there's obviously still a lot further to go, but there, there's, there's a line I remember, um, I think Phil says, obviously you won't get paid as much as the boys. And, and just it's going. just something, you know, that's just, that was, that was standard at, at that time. But I think, you know, we've got a lot further to, to come. But, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I sort of love the sort of subtle humour of the time, which we laugh at now, but at the time was a very serious thing. Um, but something that wasn't sort of necessarily talked about as much as it should have been. Um, no, I'm, I'm really proud of this film, and I feel like it's a, it's a, it's it's so wonderful to show it here. I mean, tonight we've we've got Sadiq Khan sort of hosting it, and I just feel, you know, it's a it's a real love letter to London and 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 how how wonderful it is, and how wonderful the diverse the culture is, and and what we can do here, and the and the spirit of uh, London. So yeah, to show it show it here is really exciting. And I think it's sort of it's sort of very hopeful and very um, yeah a hopeful film and I think which is obviously what we need right now. Um. <laughs> it is just that the British actors, the British stories, the British architecture, uh, London that I love more than ever because of this film and because I get to know uh, your film history better with this film. Um, but primarily, of course, it's the scripts, because when you first read it, I, it's scripts that I feel related to, that I can totally think I can um, work with, be uh, where I feel close enough to the writer to feel I'll be loyal to the material and still feel that I have something to bring to the table. And for some reason, those scripts are from here. <laughs> we just love making a film about a time when making films was so important. You know, we act, producers always act like it's national life and death. We've got to get our money, we've got to get our style, we've got to get our, oh my God, we've fallen through, oh, what are we going to do? But actually, the, when they made films in the 40s, it was a matter of life and death. They had no idea if they were going to have a film set the next day, whether they were going to have any actors, whether the, the, the Germans had invaded. And these films were little love letters to America, please come and help, please come and help, and also at the same time trying to keep the people living through the Blitz in London, in Coventry, in Bristol, across Britain, you know, keep them happy, keep a smile on their face. How can we do this? How can we make films? So for, for us as producers, we think we have challenges, but when you look back at the writers, producers, and directors and actors in those days, my God, they had challenges. It was, a, it was an incredible time, and I'm just so proud to be associated with the film. I haven't made films like Absolute Beginners and Mona Lisa and The Crying Game and Scandal and all those movies I made, which were about London, which were all sort of some sort of love letters to London. It's so great to make a film that's really about filmmakers and filmmaking at a time when it was a matter of life and death. And that's an important factor for us, for both Amanda and I, when we were making this film, is that, you know, they look a bit corny, those films now, but actually they were so important. 30 million people were really to go to the cinema. That, you know, that's never going to happen again. I mean, this was the golden age of filmmaking and film going. People needed those movies.